child took notice of this and in response, he said, well, how old would you be? He said, the problem is, although I'm two and a half years, but I have been rather ill. <laughs> I have not been enjoying good health. <laughs> so, it is an uneven comparison they're making. <laughs> they're making the comparison with the Christianity of 22,000 years old, which has reached its age full blossom of the age, and now it's about to reach the edge of the grave. And they're comparing with a child of 100 years in history of human man. This is a small child's age, in fact. So let them compare nice. the Christianity of 100 years with the Ahmadiyat of 100 years, OK? Thank you. Warring Islam. Just to How's your politics? <laughs> It's going. Huh? It's going. It's good. <laughs> OK. Just to stay on the same subject, Hazur, um, about Christianity and Ahmadiyat. Uh, during the last year, some, uh, someone actually wrote to me within the party, uh, sent me a whole lot of papers, that there is a Christian organization in America who is trying to influence the policy, uh, the political pol policies over there but at the same time has moved over to this country and influencing and infiltrated the three main parties. And uh, the reports basically indicated that they were trying to influence the government when the government was d drafting the national curriculum, and in, light of, in particular to the uh, religious studies program. And as you may know that initially the, the time scale that gave given to schools in the curriculum was something like 70 to 80 percent. No, let's... Uh come to the conclusion of the question, please. I know the problem. Okay. Yes, please. Yes. And uh, as I, uh, I didn't take the matter that seriously at that point about the religious group that was infiltrating, but as a result of the midterm elections in the uh, in US, uh, as we know that that is come to light uh, public-wise, that there is a, a great Christian movement which has uh, come about in there and tried to influence the elections and has, in fact, influenced the elections. Right. Uh, the two things that came out of there, which puzzled me, uh, or not puzzled me, and raised questions about the approach that they have taken. One is, which Hazur has indicated in the last few years, that we must become market oriented in our approach to selling literature and all sorts of our activity outside and become target oriented, which they have become, but which is not really evidence within our group as well, yet. I've got the question, please. There's, if let, I may, me, let me answer. The fact is that what you are seeing is not a religious phenomenon, it's a political phenomenon. And when I toured America this time, even went to Canada, I had some discussions with some dignitaries as well as the press people and ordinary people, and I expressed the same view to them, with them, before the election of course, that I think there is a very marked swing to the right and more interest is being taken in building new churches and frequenting churches and rigid, taking a rigid attitude in Christians, Christianity and Christian dogma. Now, this is what was naturally expected by us to have happened. Because as long as Russia made the second opposite pole for the Christian might in the so-called free world, they were involved in such serious struggle of survival that they could not give vent to their hatred of Islam and their fear of Islam's conquest, religious conquest of the West. So they had to live despite their hidden hatred and uh, animosity to Islam as friends walk hand in hand and uh, not to talk of differences. But deep inside, the hatred of Islam has always been alive. Like racialism, it was always alive. You see, a few, a few years ago, a professor of current history came to meet me, he's a Jewish gentleman, and he was talking before the, the Collapse of the Berlin Wall, I'm talking about. 
and he was so vehemently opposing my view that racialism does exist still and you have not been able to do away with it. It will raise its head, its ugly head, far more rebelliously in the recent, in the, in the coming future. And he was, first of all, he was flabbergasted. I was, who didn't know what the subject of current history was, was opposing his well-considered view as this great scholar that they had been able to do away with racialism once and for all, and now the days of racialism are over. That he is confronting, is uh, opposing this view. But I went on, kept on, I mean. And the result was that ultimately, although he couldn't give in there in my presence, he wrote me a letter which uh, all but said that, yes, you are right. He was amazed. I wish I could meet him again, then I will show him now what is happening. I am talking of the days before the uh, collapse of the communist system. Now, all the factors which were deterrent to ugly nakedness of racialism are gone overboard. Now it's raising, racialism is raising its head everywhere in every country. Racist attitudes are more to be experienced nowadays than ever before. So also is the hist story of hatred of Islam. They always hated Islam. They were allergic to the Islamic values. They always considered it as a potential hanging threat over the future of Western civilization. As such, they were never happy to strike a sort of compromise with the world of Islam. That is one factor which was suppressed because of the polarization between Russia and uh, the West. It's no more there. That factor is now free. Now, this has given birth to a very sharp swing to extreme right. A right which is based not as much on the love of Christianity as on the hatred of Islam. And that is discernible everywhere. And this is also entering politics now. It had infiltrated politics even previously when they sat together separately in their own rooms, discussing things and relationship, this factor was always the dominant factor in deciding policies. Whether this policy would help Islam spread and become a greater power, or this, factor, this policy would depress them and this and that, and how to bring about bad name to Islamic uh, figure, image in the view of the Western people and so on. Whether it was said in so many words or not, I know for certain this has always been a domineering factor in their formation of policies. Now, in relation to Bosnia, this has become naked. What enmity have they got against their own European brothers in the name of Bosnians? Excellent people. They have never raised a challenge to their social values either, because their name of Islam was just a name without having penetrated their character and uh, way of life. You could not, uh, now they are learning, of course, but previously you could not distinguish between a Christian Bosnian and a Muslim Bosnian. 